Hey guys, I'm Andre, your Minsk guide in tourism, relocation and real estate matters here in Minsk and Belarus. And today we're talking about banks. If you're on a short term stay here, let's say less than a month, the issue of the banks shouldn't bother you. You should have a good supply of cash to make sure you cover your side expenses, maybe accommodation if your card doesn't work. And the foreign cards statistically work successfully, let's say some in 70% cases, that's about it. If you wish to set yourself up here more globally, you'll need a bank account. Different banks here have different offers. I would say like dramatically different, but generally the principle is the same. You have to have your passport notarized translation and the entrance fee, so to speak, is about 100 bucks, but it varies from bank to bank. Sanction wise, it's a little bit messed up because there's not really a playbook or a manual that says that such and such banks are sanctioned and there are no dollar transfers down there and these banks will work. In the first line, you'll have to choose the bank transfer wise, whether or not a certain bank will be able to accept a certain amount of money in a certain currency like US dollars, which is the most troubled way of transferring money over here and uh, whether or not you'll be able to withdraw that money from the account if you need the cash. Other factors are not so significant, but they may also be taken into account, like conversion between accounts, uh, weekly or monthly withdrawal amount of US dollars. All this will have to fit into your scenario and uh, all this you actually have to do during your research. Let's see what the banks are offering. In all these banking things, guys, information is highly irregular and the personnel that is changing each other and their department chiefs uh, some of them may be more smart, more knowledgeable than others. But here we are in the AMT Bank, which is okay for you to open a, an account with just a foreign passport and not a retranslation of the passport. Not a retranslation is something you'll be using at every step here in Belarus if you're settling for a long while. But they don't really make a thing out of your registration. It's not super important according to the girl at the desk. You will be uh, then getting your bank details immediately. Your cards will be ready in a few days, depending on the plan you choose and the address where they have to be posted, or you can just collect them from the branch. As for the current limits, I'll put them in the comment under the video because they may change this year and this video will still be up to date. When you transfer money here, if you transfer, suppose it's some 50,000 US dollars, nobody can predict whether or not this is going to be a successful transfer because, again, American transit banks and uh, other factors may be involved uh, axing the transfer. But once the money is here, you would just have to show a written evidence of uh, the money ownership. According to the girl at the desk, again, it doesn't have to be something super complicated like your annual tax form or something, just a bank statement from the other side saying that in such and such name there was an account with, say, 50,000 that got wired here, and this closes the matter. Let's go to the next bank. One of the biggest places in the country, Belarus Bank, that has multiple branches across the province, uh, which may be comfortable asks one to fill a form and immediately supply a say three months statement from the bank from the income uh, or salary account just to prove that uh, your incomes are legit and only after that you fill the form over here you have your passport and notarized translation of the passport and in several days time they give a clearance for your account no specific grant cause needed for uh, for the account to be opened and transfer problems are not reported, at least at this central branch. Dollars or euro come in when you wire them, no big deal. Last but not least, with Belarus Bank, you can take out the money. The operator will charge commission of uh, 15% and the ATMs uh, give currency, give rubles mostly commission free. Uh, that's if you wish to use your foreign card to get some cash out. The girl at the uh, desk said that the uh, limit is $250 or 250 euro per week. Let's hope it's correct. The next bank in our research list is Bill Swiss Bank, the old name, now it's BSB. Uh, the only annoying thing about it so far, it's charging 2% for the incoming transfer. So to get your hard-earned money, they actually charge money to land on your account. Otherwise, everything seems to fit. Let's find out the details. 
on top of the above everything else seems to be quite straightforward you show up here your passport your notarized translation of the passport and they open a card account it's 115 euro for an account and within a few days your card will be ready to be picked up here or posted wherever you desire uh, they don't have any information about block transfers from Europe. Mostly they say about the successful transfers to Europe. But since there is no like everyday information about blocks from Europe, it seems like if you check it on your end and if you're okay with a 2% commission loss on this end, everything should just work finely. So this is one of the options. And of course, when you wire the money, say 50,000 euro for your, say, one room flat over here, you have to have a proof of income source. There could be a bank printout, there could be some kind of a deal on the other end that says that such and such gentleman officially received this amount of money, which now surfaces here. This is the requirement from the bank security. As it happens, Alpha Bank here is the pickiest bank on top of the usual don't shoot in inside the bank warnings. They have a hundred bucks entry for, uh, for, for subscription for getting accounts. On top of that, they need the solid reason to open up an account, your salary uh, recipient in Belarus, you work. Simply speaking, you are studying, you are buying a flat and already have some paperwork in your hands. And for now, they don't really do incoming dollar transfers. This may change or may not, but uh, right now, my favorite alpha, although they have their very handy app uh, that you can use to pay local bills, uh, they're not the handiest guys to set up an account and uh, purchase a property or something like this top the account and get by to pay the local bills that's a good start because they have a really practical app which compared to Bill Swiss Bank BSB is much much better otherwise I'm afraid this is not the place to go for now but this may change and if you come in yourself and research if this bank suits you or not you may uh, judge better than me now in my little experiment here, Prior Bank seems the most inventive or creative, perhaps, to open up an account for a currency. Each account has to have a kind of a separate insurance account that you can't use, and it will hold 20,000 rubles that you can't use while you're using the first account, be that rubles, euro, or dollars. They don't have any troubles with transferring monies from abroad, no matter what currency this is, but uh, each time, let's say you get a 20,000 euro incoming transfer, they chip off a 3% commission. So I'm not sure if you will be considering this bank in your research or not. That's up to you well, guys. guys. The conclusion of my bank research is quite straightforward. Uh, depending on the issue on hand, you will be able to find yourself a bank and arrange a transfer and then arrange a deal. But at each step of this chain, you will have to consider different commissions, exclusions, and uh, existing rules at the given moment. It uh, doesn't make much sense to list them because by the time you'll be seeing this video, they may actually change. So it's a ground research. And the more you cooperate with professionals, the more efficient solution to your issue on hand will be generated. Thank you for staying with the channel. Donate if you can. See you in Minsk someday. Cheers.